My name is Blair Gould, uh, and I work for Mi'kmaq Kanawamadnoe. I'm the Director of Programs and Student Support Services. Uh, I'm going to be talking about today the Oral Ulnuim Oral Language Program that Mi'kmaq Kanawamadnoe has developed uh, for early years oral language development. So the program is targeted for uh, three, four, five, and six-year-olds. Uh, so that tends to be between kindergarten three and grade one. Uh, so we developed a, a series of resources um, supporting the, the overall assessment of oral language with the three, four, five, six-year-olds, of course. And so we look at uh, the perspectives from the children and, of course, uh, their caregivers, their elders, and their teachers. And so we've developed in total four different assessments uh, that that capture uh, individual students and their success in oral language, of course, looking at uh, how contributors uh, from those three areas, uh, you know, ensure success for all children. And so, or, or the child actually. Uh, what we have developed is a series of puppets, uh, more specifically for oral language. Uh, the face of that is Andle, the most puppet. And uh, we've developed hand puppets, uh, finger puppets. And we developed uh, so far, uh, as of 2000, uh, early 2019, a total of 11 books. And both, uh, four of which are translated in Mi'kmaq and in English, and the other seven which are translated into three languages, English, Mi'kmaq, and French. What we're doing about this program that makes it so great and so distinct is that we're driving what assessment looks like uh, for our children. And we are controlling uh, and taking control of that piece uh, that has been long controlled by somebody else. And so we are taking the ruler and redefining that ruler and measuring our, our own successes uh, that fit our needs and of course the needs of our students. We uh, pride ourselves in partnering with directors of education, with principals, with teachers, with parents, and of course with the partners at the table uh, from, from their respective organizations, all centered around changing uh, and enhancing what is happening, of course, uh, with our with our children in, in these respective grades. Uh, what I've seen, the benefits of this program that I've seen is that it's bridging together community and school. And so ultimately beyond the assessment, uh, and, and we call it an assessment, but it's much more than that. Um, but really beyond that, it's bridging together community and school. And so we're seeing a lot of parents engage through this process, of course. They are one of the main uh, contributors to the assessment as well as, you know, as equally as students, as equally as, as elders and teachers. Um, we've seen a dramatic change in, in the way parents are, are just assuming that responsibility of, of their child's learning, that that's very important, that we engage the parents, that they know what's going on, uh, that, they, that they see success within their children, they know how to contribute to success. And so it's, it's been such a rewarding piece to, to be part of that. And, and not everybody is perfect, um, most certainly, but we all strive to want the same things. Uh, the other benefits of this program that I've seen, you know, besides the assessment itself, beyond all of that itself, what we've seen, and of course accounts of teachers, is that how Andale, um has kind of set a tone in the classroom. And so one particular classroom uh, teacher had shared when I bring him out, like nobody talks to him in, in any other language but Mi'kmaq, uh, that, that the puppet uh, is, is a family, you know, is part of this classroom family and, and children are very respectful um, of, of the things that they do and the things that they say uh, and they ensure that they include this puppet. And so we know uh, the close relationships 
uh, that students have developed with this puppet. We're seeing now uh, very early on in our pilot stages when we introduced it in grades uh, kindergarten, we're now seeing those same children in grade one and so there's, a, there's an existing relationship there and so there's that existing trust there as well. And so what we're hoping for is just to really allow children to, to develop those relationships to be comfortable while doing assessments. They, they never know they're being assessed. It's just part of, you know, a friendly game with Andale one-to-one. Um, and of course, it allows us to collect over a thousand pieces of information, uh, of course, which communities own. Communities own their own data. Uh, and, and that allows communities to make those decisions, uh, you know, data to instruct uh, instruction. Some challenges, you know, I, I, I don't like to see them as challenges, um, but sometimes weather is a challenge. Um, you know, sometimes we, of course, respect uh, the jurisdiction uh, that each community holds for education. And so not, it's not a one size fits all model. We're very respective of how communities want to do this. And, and carry it out. Some people do it, um, you know, in a birthday party fashion, for example. Some people do it more one-to-one, -one, um, you know, without a birthday party, and that's totally fine. Uh, we like to celebrate all successes, uh, and so I don't see them as challenges as much as we're, we're celebrating that distinctiveness of all of our communities and how we approach uh, this common uh, approach that we developed, of course, with everybody at the table. Of course, some of the challenges have been um, be, like inside of training. Uh, so when we provide training, we are looking at different ways of offering training because it's not always feasible to do face-to-face -face training with our educators. Uh, sub shortage is such a real thing and um, we don't like to pull teachers away from their classrooms too often. And so we're looking at alternate ways of delivering PD, meaningful PD, uh, which will allow them to connect a little bit further, you know, and, and beyond just the one day that they can always go back to referencing uh, some of that, that learning that needs to happen. Uh, some of the advice I would have is, of course, um, we are open to sharing. Uh, we, we've built on this with the intention that we would be open to sharing uh, the work that we've done. Of course, uh, there is a process in that. What we want to continue uh, to pay forward uh, within ourselves, of course, is is taking control of that. Uh, you know, Andale has four best friends right now. We're in, Alia discovers her, her math and, and developing a math assessment program for grades primary to three. Uh, using the same existing characters that we've developed, but one one girl taking the face of of that assessment, and so there's two other puppets, and so we need to really come back, recollect ourselves, and decide on those priorities um, that we have for our, the intention of our, our characters that we develop together, and I, and I believe that you know. When we look at celebrating our successes, I know I've gone to many conferences to share about what we're doing and what's working. You know, this is just a one little piece of work that we're doing, striving for, um, you know, First Nation control of First Nation education, uh, exercising our jurisdiction. You know, when we think about indigenizing the classrooms and ensuring that when our children see resources, they see themselves reflecting, reflected in all of everything that we do. That is a high priority for us, of course, engaging beyond the, the four walls of the school and engaging with the community is something that's very important to us. And of course, um, above all, you know, is ensuring that we're doing right. Um, we're setting the priorities uh, for tomorrow's for tomorrow's workforce, right? And so we really, really want to embrace technology. We want to maintain the connection with our languages and our cultures. 
uh, you know, and, and this is just a sliver of what we do at Mingwa Gonamadnoy. And I'm sure my colleagues have shared uh, many other wonderful initiatives that are that are happening, that are driven by community, for community. Uh, that is what we strive for. And I wish I could share more about what language is doing. Uh, of course, uh, that's such a big component of who we are as Mi'kmaq Kanamadnui. Our board of directors, of course, the chiefs of all the communities, hold language uh, at such a high importance in that there is such a critical need uh, to revitalize and reclaim our languages in this land. To me, Indigenous education is, is not different from education that we have the same principles, we have the same, we define our outcomes, uh, we ensure that our culture and our language is, is, are well respected within those principles. Uh, we give uh, the highest opportunity and the most opportunity to our students uh, to ensure employability. Uh, we ensure uh, that wellness is a big component of, of what we do. Uh, and yeah, I think Indigenous education is something that strives uh, and has paved the way. You know, Mi'kmaq Gnambanui is such a prime example of that. And so, and, and looking at myself as, as a learner, I grew up in a, in a Mi'kmaq Gnambanui, um, I guess, system where we had the, or my community had the control and the jurisdiction over education. And so that says something, uh, not only to myself uh, in present day, you know, that I was allowed to go to school um, from kindergarten to grade 12 and even some post-secondary education in my own community. I, I learned with my, amongst my own people, I learned from my own people. I've had many teachers who were Mi'kmaq um, and to me, that only enhanced uh, the success that I have today. And I feel very empowered um, being part of that. And so I've, I've never, you know, we, we talk about different stories about uh, racism, about, um, you know, experiencing those traumatic things as young children, as, you know, middle school children, whomever. Uh, and I'm very fortunate to say that in my schooling from kindergarten to grade 12, that I never had to experience that. And most importantly, my children will never have to experience that as they go to school uh, in our own community. And I'm very proud of that. Uh, it's something that, that I think will develop them better, you know, as, as more confident learners, uh, very successful learners. Uh, I have such high priorities um, and, and high standards for what we do. Uh, the standards that I, I set, you know, for myself five years ago look entirely different now. And I, and I, and I believe I've reached them uh, and, and I've set the bar higher. And so what I want to do um, in the next 10 years is continue to set that bar higher to ensure that nobody is left behind to ensure that we accommodate all students within our system. And of course, most importantly, and I think um, it's just a, a Mi'kmaq way of being, is to share what we always do. Uh, that that Tig is, is such an important concept uh, for us Mi'kmaq, that we have to help one another. And so I think Mi'kmaq Gnambanui has, has really exemplified some of the ways that we control education, uh, of course, within our communities. Uh, but it's something that, you know, when I think 10 years from now, I see our languages reclaimed. I see uh, a school system, uh, both provincially and, and First Nation, uh, you know, respectively promoting uh, more cultural identity, uh, promoting this relationship that we have as treaty people. Uh, I, see, I see Canada being in a better place with, with the work that, uh, that our people are doing and have done. Uh, and, you know, while, while being very ambitious, it's important to be ambitious in everything that we do. Uh, that creates standard. And so 
when we work towards ambitious goals, they eventually become reality. You know, and so I, I assume, you know, thinking about Mi'kmaq Gunamadnui 20 years ago, that, that our chief set ambitious goals, and I believe we've reached them within 20 years. And so there's a need to set further ambitious goals, uh, and again, to see where we are, and measuring our success, uh, being the control, you know, having control over our own data, um, is, is such an important piece of that. Ensuring that we include all learners, uh, whether or not um, we have diverse learners. You know, respecting all learners is, of course, a high priority for us. And I think that learning happens inside and outside of, of schools. And I think we are in such a great position to, to enhance that. And so I hope, uh, and yeah, I just think that in 10 years from now, we will continue to set the bar higher and higher uh, until, you know, I, and, and I know uh, it's going to forever be uh, something that we do.